This is Twit. Hey, speaking of uh, paying for things, if you pay for Copilot... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the interesting thing about this to me is uh, paying for Copilot might actually be going away, right? Um, they haven't gotten their announcements lined up, but I talked about that weird thing where the Asia part of Microsoft pre-announced that you would get these things, and I said they don't have a thing like this, right. and then they announced it in the Insider program. So the, I think the model a year from now is going to be that you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, which you pay for. The prices are going to go up. I mean, that's honestly, it's been a while, so maybe that's due. Um, and you will get tokens or credits or whatever they're calling them toward Copilot services, right? So instead of paying for Copilot Pro, which is 20 bucks a month for an individual, or Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is $30 per month per user, you pay what you just pay for your subscription like you always have. And then you can use Copilot in things like Word and Excel and wherever else you might use Copilot. And you, and you get those, um, you know, those benefits until you, ex, you know, <laughs> you've used up all the resources. At that point, if you use it that much, you could say, well, maybe I do want to pay for Copilot. But I, th I think the, uh, this is, I wrote, I don't know, it's probably six months ago, something like, I, I, I'm not going to pay for AI, right? I am not going to pay for AI. I will pay for Microsoft 365, which will offer AI features, right? I, I'm not paying for AI, but AI is part of that feature set that I don't mind paying for depending on the service, right? So anyway, that hasn't happened yet. So if you do pay for Copilot, i.e. are a dummy, uh, you can now <laughs> use the new Outlook app that nobody likes and use it to create custom themes, <laughs> which is the dumbest nexus of things do you, I've what ever you, heard How do in my you do life. it? Do you say, hey, Copilot, do, do a new theme? <laughs> how do you do it? Um, so if you've ever, so uh, Google has something like this in the Pixel, and I think, no, Apple doesn't do this yet. They will, where you can create, uh, use prompts to create some kind of an image, right? And they have yeah. like, I, I forget what they call it on Pixel. So I think it's not Pixel wallpaper or something like that. I'll have but, to try this. I have a Pixel. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. It's just a generative AI thing. It creates an image. So you say something like, I want a river. I want a balloon, uh -huh. and I want it to be in the style of a, you know, <laughs> Renaissance painting or whatever. All right. And then you get, like, <laughs> several choices, and you can yeah. pick one or not. And because Pixel also does dynamic theming, your you phone then will say, then take on theme. this color scheme. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So it's this Outlook capability is just like that. Same, j just for Outlook. Right. Like, Outlook is, a like, if you look at the screenshot that's in the article. Oh, I could do You'll that. see that. Outlook is a is a curious app. This was true of the mail and calendar apps too, by the way. In that unique among Windows 11 apps, it has like this kind of background image thing that it does. So it's not really clear oh, for this picture. Cool. Yeah. So each of the pieces of the UI, like the navigation pane on the left, that folder list that's next, and then the reading pane, et cetera, they're mm -hmm. actually separated out like as modules. So you can kind of see between them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, they use this, they have background images or colors or, you know, uh, outlook.com, you know, and outlook on the web have had themes as well for a long time, like classic themes. But um yeah, it's, I, I, I guess, although, you know, my thing is, you're there to read the email. When are, you know, <laughs> when are you looking at a blank background of an app? It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird. It thing. says it refreshes every four hours. That means it regenerates a new image every four hours? <laughs> Probably. I don't have, I don't pay for, I'll look anymore. I refer a Copilot, Copilot, so I can't even look at this, but. It's kind um, of an intriguing idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this makes more sense at the OS level, frankly. Um, yeah, it does. So is it better than a wallpaper rotator. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, right. Yeah. I so, like it, this. I yeah, because you'll that. you'll be sitting there one day and you'll you know minimize something and like look at that thing. <laughs> you know, there's like a yeah. weird image on the background. Um, because you know AI can. Does go anybody off the rails. do that? that? Say customize your whole OS right. based on AI image. No, that's I'm, changing I'm surprised. Every right. few hours. It seems like the type of thing uh, Google and Apple would have done by now. I think Google's gotten the closest with that thing I was talking about, which is pretty. Yeah, cool, on actually. the Pixel. The only thing, my only problem with that is how um, temporary that stuff is. So you generate something, you're like, oh, maybe, and then you generate something again. Then the thing you did before is gone. It's gone. It's gone. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously they don't want to, you know, they don't want to be storing all this stuff everywhere. It's, most of it's garbage, but there's some kind of, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that stuff's neat. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.